So first off, I want to thank uh, Jerome and all the people over here organizing this. This is a really awesome event, so let's give them like major props. Thank you guys. Uh, so my name is Griff Green, and I am co-founder of the White Hat Group, and obviously I'm uh, co-founder of Giveth, which is what I'm going to present today. Uh, I, in 2016, I worked on this crazy project called the DAO that may have ruined it for everybody, but sorry about that. But it's, uh, it's kind of set an interesting stage for smart contract security, where people are really worried about uh, going too far on the decentralization spectrum. And it kind of made an excuse for all the ICOs to just start, you know, putting all their money in multi-sigs and not having any accountability. So the White Hat Group kind of saw this coming and we weren't, oh hey, uh, we weren't very excited about the path that it was headed. So we started a project called Giveth. It kind of came out of the seeds of the, uh, of the DAO. Let's move this thing. We're a little behind. Um, and so, uh, out of the ashes of the DAO came Giveth, and we started Giveth to really focus on building projects for uh, building the, uh, the DNA that we need for decentralized governance. The DAO kind of put everybody on the step back. But still, people don't understand what Giveth is, right? I get asked all the time, what the hell is Giveth? And it's hard to describe sometimes to people because it's a new thing. It's not an ICO, it's not a foundation, it's not a company, it's really just its own community, right? Giveth is a community centered around blockchain for good. So the original goal of Giveth was just to be uh, a project for decentralized governance. We learned a lot of lessons from the DAO. Uh, the big one, which I already kind of talked about, is starting out with uh, centralized security features because you know we're not in the space where we can just go full-on decentral right away and just hope that it's all gonna work out so it's really important to start bake in escape hatches whitelists upgradeability time delays owners all of these things are really cool and important to start off with when you're starting your projects but uh, it's in, it's and it's okay to do if you bake in a path towards decentralization when you start, right? So like the escape hatch is totally centralizing, right? Somebody can just click a button and take the money. But you can zero out that escape hatch caller later and it's gone. It's just a safety net, right? So we created, uh, can you go back to the mini-me stuff? So we created a couple smart contracts. Uh, the Mini-Me, the Vault, and a bunch of others that we used to, so that we could ourselves be a DAO. <laughs> uh, and it's called, you know, we take this uh, process that we call dog fooding. It's pretty popular in software design, right? It's like, uh, you don't want to, if you had to eat your dog's food, it would probably taste a lot better, right? So that's how we live, right? And it's not easy at all. It's hard to be a blockchain-based entity. Uh, but that helps us build it for everybody else, which is kind of the goal of Giveth. Uh, we're, the White Hat Group is a kind-hearted, practical bunch, and we didn't really feel like we needed a whole lot of money to get this project going. So we decided to build Giveth in the form of uh, decentralizing nonprofits. Because, you know, investors are great because they give you a bunch of money, and that's cool, right? But they also suck because they gave you a bunch of money. And it's really hard to work with them sometimes. So it was just easier to stay out of that realm and build the tools that we want to see. Uh, and the charity space is ripe for decentralization. It's, it's a great place to experiment because it's low risk. And so we just started building stuff and building stuff. And as the community grew, we actually started bringing people from the normal nonprofit space. And they gave us a lot of perspective and actually influenced the community as we started building. And we started actually focusing less on governance, especially since Argon has that covered for us pretty well. And so the Colony and these other projects. And really started focusing on something that there's nothing else in the space really doing. Uh, building things for nonprofits. So, uh, except for Alice right here. They're doing a great job too. Um, so, uh, we became the first decentralized altruistic communities. 
A decentralized altruistic community is a community focused on a, a goal, one concrete goal, like I'll talk about helping the homeless in Paris in a, in a second, uh, but uh, with a blockchain-based infrastructure. And what's really cool about this infrastructure is that it's open source, and the way we're designing it is to be extremely inviting, right? It's not just, oh yeah, here's our code, walk away. It's like document it as much as possible and be as transparent as possible, which is where our DAP really comes in. So you can see how donations flow throughout the community. And trying to build, communities don't have a hierarchical structure, which is also a very difficult problem to solve. How do you organize without a boss? So we're practicing that as well. The giveth goal, though, is to be the engine for DACs, to pump out as many DACs as possible and to make it easy for people to be efficient within these communities and share resources amongst each other. So our flagship product is the DAP. Uh, the giveth DAP, which Wojtek, RJ, Sasha, and all these guys are working on so hard. Uh, it's pretty complicated to explain, I'll be honest. So we're going to head over to the imagination station and I'm just going to read a story, okay? This story is about Manu. Manu is a sweetheart, right? She has volunteered with homeless organizations here in Paris in the past, but it always kind of felt ineffective. She personally felt like she was just easing symptoms of homelessness and that there were better ways to help, but she didn't really know what they were. Now fast forward to today. She just hit it big with an early Ether investment and She's really excited about using her profits to help people sleeping in the streets here in, here in Paris. But she doesn't just want to turn the ether into euros and then send it to a charity and then kind of just hope that something good happens with it. She knows that these organizations are doing their best, but they haven't really been focusing on the core root of the problems, in her opinion. She wants to be more involved with what the money is spent on, and she wants to keep it as ether as long as possible. So she hears about Giveth and decides to try to build a community to help her end homelessness in Paris. And Giveth works great for her because she has a bunch of ether to give. She goes to our DAP's webpage and answers a few questions and boom, she, in a few minutes she has built Sleep Safely in Paris DAC, right? Uh, Decentralized Altruistic Community. Uh, or the SIP DAC, which is much easier to say. The SIP DAC is a fully functional blockchain-based nonprofit community with a transparent accounting system and a riot chat room right out of the gate. Just after a few questions, it's good to go. Like all the tools to build a community. This community can receive funds and then, and then funnel them to projects that help homeless people in, in Paris. She seeds it with her own funds to get started and then looks for, other cool, for cool projects to support in other DACs that have already built themselves up while her community grows. Eventually, the community does grow, and other people start to donate to the SIP DAC. These givers will be connected to Manon on Riot, and she'll act as their delegate for this DAC. And when she finds a campaign to support, the givers that delegated her fun the funds to her will get notified that Manon is sending their donation to a specific campaign. And then those givers will be connected to the people running that campaign. And if they don't like what that campaign is doing, they can actually veto Manon's decision because she, as the delegate of the DAC, is only stewarding the funds. Ultimately, the original giver maintains complete control of their donation until it is locked in a campaign or milestone to be used for a specific purpose. As Manon's SIP DAC starts to grow and raise funds, more people actually step up as leaders in the community. Manon wants to appoint these leaders as delegates as well. So she implements Aragon's simple multi-delegate governance model to the SIP DAC. Now givers are randomly assigned as delegates for every donation. And if the SIP DAC continues to grow, they can get even crazier and they can implement a liquid democracy module or some kind of other governance module on top of their campaign. So they can handle more delegates and organize more efficiently. Many interesting projects start creating campaigns, and asking for support for creative ideas to help the homeless population in Paris. A few from the SIP community are adamant that the biggest problem with being homeless is the lack of showers. So they want to build an outdoor shower near an abandoned metro station. 
these guys, we call them makers in the Giveth platform, they make a plan. And they need one ether to get supplies, and that will allow them to take the day off work and build the shower. And then they'll get 0.2 ether every week to monitor, clean, protect, and maintain these awesome showers. They're also able to expense the propane needed to keep them warm. They create a campaign on Giveth called Shower Time. It's fun. Uh, Mano steps up to be a reviewer to keep the guys in check. And with her reputation at stake and her oversight in the mix, Shower Time campaign has no trouble raising... Oh, did I step on something? Okay, cool. Uh, um, Shower Time has no problem raising all the funds they need. They get four ether so they can keep it alive for a few months. The makers do a great job, and many homeless people get to enjoy a fresh hot shower. Sadly, before the end of the first week, the police come and tear it down. One ether was already collected by the guys to build the shower, and of course they get to keep it. I mean, it's crypto, you can't make them give it back. But the other three ether are actually able to be automatically returned to the givers to support other projects, even though this one failed. Because Mano, as the reviewer, was able to cancel the failed campaign, and the other ether wasn't just given to people like in Kickstarter and uh, other charities, but it was held in a smart contract. Magic of smart contracts. With other members, uh, let's see, so... Uh, shower time, despite being short-lived, was actually able to impact some other people's lives. One nam man named Batiste was able to take a shower before a job interview, and he felt like it actually got him the job. He became a very active member of the SIP DAC. And in the riot chat room, he is always very adamant that what is needed by people sleeping on the streets is to receive love, attention, and a sense of belonging from normal people in society. With other members in the community, Batiste forms a group with a plan to go out and talk to the people that are sleeping in the street and ask them as peers what put them out there. They always go out uh, together in, in groups of two, and they always use a video app giveth integrated to, into their dApp called Snapproof to make short 20-second videos before and after their adventure, as well as a few short clips during the day when they feel like they made a breakthrough or have something really interesting to document, so they can create this little video story. Everyone that does these videos gets paid a regular day's salary when they go out there uh, through the Give It Dap in Ether. It starts out as just a small thing, and a few people doing it on the weekends, and then after watching who was successful and who wasn't, Batiste implements a strict rule, or at least suggests it, suggests it strongly. No one can buy the people they're working with lunch or give any financial support of any kind. They really have to befriend them on an equal playing field. Then it starts making a noticeable impact. And a lot of people that were in the street are finding safe places to sleep and integrating back into society with this campaign. Some I know who loves the videos and sees this campaign's effectiveness, puts a bunch of ether into the campaign to incentivize more people to attempt this strategy. Batiste ends up quitting his job and helping the homeless, homeless full-time because of this campaign. And this is where Give Us Magic can really begin to shine, when successes are discovered. Because the good word about Batiste's project spreads, as obviously Manos DAC in Paris isn't the only DAC connected with homelessness. In fact, one of the delegates in the European Homelessness Research DAC, which is like an overarching DAC for all of Europe, uh, they ended up being connected with Batiste when they delegated some funds from a Paris donor to this campaign. And so since they are already connected, it was really easy for them to just message them and ask Batiste to, par to participate in documenting his campaign so other people can do it more effectively. They get funding to hire a copywriter and put together a handbook. And then that escalates further, and this handbook evolves into a one-day online course that anyone can take. With these supporting structures in place, it becomes a very common campaign in DACs concerned with homelessness all around the world. In fact, this idea actually inspires other DACs with completely different goals to try a similar concept. 
because everyone can see what's happening if you're in these different groups. So the picking up litter DACs, the teaching kids to code DACs, rescuing feral pets DACs, elderly assistance DACs, all these groups had quick success with a modification of that strategy. It turns out that paying a fair wage to people working in pairs is very effective and relatively cheap for the results that you get. And because the people on the ground make short videos so that the givers can watch them on Snapproof and other social media platforms, uh, they, they, the giver retention is really high. And many people like Batiste can quit their day jobs to focus on the cause full time. This was a simple idea which was successful in Paris and took off to spread through the DAC community like wildfire, helping altruistic communities tackle various problems around the world. Um, so that's the end of the imagination story. So this is the goal of the Give It This is the dream, is to be able to connect all of these people together and collaborate on their goal. And so that you, when you have this community all in one place, if, we can, if our, uh, if our pl platform works as we want it to, they can, share, uh, so they can share resources effectively. And then these ideas that come out of this, the grassroots ideas that come out of uh, permissionless innovation within these communities can spread vi virally. The goal is to build communities around causes. And the Giveth community, the, the Giveth DAC, we're trying to solve problems on the technical level and on the cultural level. On the, on the cultural level, you have a lot, of these, uh, a lot of interesting things that happen when money enters communities. And you can see what happened in like, uh, all the crypto subreddits, right? Our Ethereum was just a magical place, especially in 2016, where money wasn't allowed to be talked about. All the moder moderators kicked people out. And it was really nice. It was uh, lovey-dovey in those subreddits, especially compared to other cryptos. And I wanted, we want to do the same thing within the Giveth community. And the dApps kind of taken that place, where all the financial discussion can happen without having to interrupt the human relations. You see this with Uber and Airbnb as well. When you get an Uber, you just sit down in the cab. You never have to have that interesting discussion about uh, money and how much to pay. And that is kind of the secret sauce of Uber and Airbnb that people don't really talk about. And we want to be that same secret sauce for building communities around causes where people can chat in the chat rooms without having to jump in their monkey minds and think about all the scarcity that money creates and start uh, and just focus on creating ideas to help the people that they want to help. Uh, also, but unlike Uber and Airbnb, the give it that never takes a cut. We're run completely on donations. We don't need, we don't have a profit model. We're just sustained by your guys' love. So thank you. Uh, Another, another uh, oh, and if you do want to donate, uh, our ENS domain is revolution.f. So you just type, oh yeah, Nick's, Nick made that happen, by the way. Thanks, Nick. Uh, so if you just type in revolution.f into MetaMask or MyCrypto or any of those things, it'll just pop up with our address. The other cultural uh, thing that we want to create is in these digital communities, it's really hard to have a human connection with people. So. We, we want to integrate uh, video as much as possible so that you, know, you can feel more connected to people when you see into their eyes. It, it, it's a different level of connection when they're just a handle. It's, it's not as cool, you know? And of course, building that strong web. Whenever we can find a reason to connect a person on social media or put them in a chat room, we just hook them up with all the connections they could ever want. On the technical side, the core of our uh, DAP is liquid pledging. Liquid pledging uh, is invitingly open source. Definitely go check it out. It's a, really cool, uh, it's a really cool smart contract that allows you to build any type of organization you want. Uh, the Give It DAC is really focused on building products for everyone, right? It's not just for us, so when we try to build something, we over-document, we make it invitingly open source. And we build it in a, we try to build in a more general sense. So while we built it for building DACs, it's actually, you could totally make a normal business with it, with a CEO and COO and delegate the funds through these channels. Anyway, Jordy gave a great talk at DevCon 3 
Uh, so if you want to learn more about liquid pledging, you can check it out. And I should say that it's very experimental. In fact, RJ is uh, hacking it right now to make it an Aragon app. So you probably want to wait before you really dive in, but definitely consider it. One of the issues we had with it, though, was that it had really high gas costs. And that moved us to come up with another interesting solution. And this is all about how the Giveth DAC works. If we see a problem that we feel like the rest of the community can benefit from uh, are solving it, then we make it, we, we, uh, we try to do it for everybody. We over-document. And so that's how I fell into scaling now, because last week I uh, helped organize a conference with the Web3 Foundation and took up a lot of time. But that's how we do it at Giveth. Uh, so we researched our scaling issues, and uh, what we ended up doing was just moving our DAP to Rinkeby in the short term, because you know we're a blockchain-based entity. We have to pay the people that are working for us. And so it's a little clunky, but you, you can do a we, we uh, do all the DAP mechanics on Rinkeby and receive donations on the main net and send the donations out to the people that earn them uh, through a multi-sig, uh, multi-send. I'll talk about that later. So uh, that's the joys of being a blockchain-based blockchain entity. You gotta just do whatever works. The cool thing about doing this kind of thing on a sidechain, though, is that you can do a lot of cool UI testing, and it's, it's relatively beneficial. It's part of that centralization without uh, it's those centralizing security features. And I think it's important for everyone just to think about doing a lot of testing on these sidechains because it, uh, the users need to learn how to use your product. Anyway, yeah, we can go to the DAP team. So, uh, I should talk about all the people that are making this happen. We have Voitech, who's leading the DAP team, and he is the real product owner of the magic there, and Sasha and RJ. Uh, Sasha's doing all the front end stuff, and RJ's doing the smart contracts. They have a lot of help from all the random contributors that come in uh, and do user testing and all these other little bug fixes that they can. Grace is the charity insider that uh, gives us a lot of, in, helps us understand what's going on in the rest of the world outside of the blockchain space. And I should say, you know, Voitech is the lead, but we actually use Holacracy and Lumio to organize our things. I think we can keep going. Yeah, there we go. And Lumio is a great product. If you guys can, definitely check it out, lumio.org. It's awesome for uh, putting together uh, uh, decisions as a, in a decentralized way. Because in, in our uh, structure, everyone's a doer. There are no bosses. And the gover so I'm going to have to speed through this, but uh, the governance, the governance uh, section, the governance circle do is focused on the, doing the admin work and researching governance and modeling DACs. And uh, that's uh, me, Kai, Jen, and Linz. Linz didn't give us a picture. Um, we basically follow this book called Reinventing Organizations. It's an awesome book. I really recommend anyone who's doing decentralized governance check it out because it will be really influential. There's lots of people doing flat hierarchies and they have been in the past. Uh, please check that out. Also check out Lumio uh, and Holacracy. Very, very important tools, uh, things that we learned. So hopefully you guys can learn from them too. Uh, we build a reward DAO, which gamifies con uh, contributions, which is pretty cool. Uh, I wish I could talk about it, but there's a Medium post. Uh, basically, we just dish out points, and then people find out how much they're worth later. They have to put all their stuff on the Wall of Fame, which is another project that Edu built, which is really cool. Uh, that's how we get everyone to watch their videos. We ran a Burning Man theme camp so through our POC DAP. And that was, uh, that was a very successful adventure, a nonprofit temporary event. Uh, also, we did it with the Scaling Now campaign that we just did. And then, oh yeah, we can stay in the comms. The comms, they, uh, they do all the work around spreading the good news. Oh, by the way, I'm just explaining how we're organized so that if you guys want to come in and you find a place, just dive in, right? Uh, so if you're into communications uh, and, and like social media, this is the place to go. Uh, Chris does a great job at stewarding this organization. Uh, he's very organized and actually keeps the, all of Giveth organized by managing all the random projects we're working on. It's, it, this, I think that this campaign, more than anything, the circle, 
uh, exemplifies duocracy because Alan, Yaler, Cleo, Joanna, and Lansky, they all were just random contributors that started working and started doing things and they started receiving some donations and then they just became more and more active and some of them are quitting their jobs and doing stuff with Giveth, so it's pretty cool. And Yaler's crazy. Yaler is why this slideshow is so nuts. He was in Peru and he made this for us, so, so uh, thanks, Yaler. Uh, hope you guys didn't get too dizzy from all this. Uh, every, but basically, everyone comes in and figures out how to contribute. And social coding is probably the place that a lot of the blockchain world will want to hang out because its goal is to incubate projects that don't have a direct profit model uh, in this space. So Quasia is the steward of this amazing campaign. He's really been killing it lately with, the, uh, uh, with so much activity. It's a really fun place to hang out. Uh, and he's got his fingers in all the pies. And then we have Jordy, who's working on the 777 standard and all sorts of interesting projects like Dapnode with Edu. Dapnode is something everyone should check out because a lot of people who are building, uh, not everyone, but uh, all the people that are actually building dApps, if you can uh, just deploy peer-to-peer -peer nodes in a decentralized way, that's kind of the goal. So definitely check out Dapnode. Edu also did the Wall of Fame. Oz did snap proof, which is what we were talking about before. Uh, Alex is working on the back end and network engineering. Adria is building, doing auditing all of our code, and he's probably going to work on like POA networks. Adam and Yalda are doing Bright ID, and it's a really cool project that's focusing on just creating uniqueness, like proving that an address is one unique person. Uh, without all the other overhead that is like, oh, connecting an, I, a name to that ID. So, uh, and Yalda might be an alien, I don't know. She's trying to Dalify space. You should check out her talk tomorrow. She's really cool. Uh, Bowen Sanders is building an application that's kind of just random, that uh, Hudson Jameson built a smart contract for getting married on Ethereum. He got married at, at uh, the Burning Man camp last year, so he uh, is building a UI for that, which is really cool. Alon's doing point spot and actually made this awesome multi-send so uh, that, that uh, saves a lot of gas if you're sending a lot of transactions. I'm out of time, so I'm just going to fly through this. Swarm City hangs out a lot. And they're working on like a, a Trello-like platform that you can put Ether to cards. It's called Ethcan. Really cool uh, for project management. But these are just some of the projects that we have. There's a lot of them out there. Uh, if you guys want to help, come to, uh, go to join.giveit.io. I'll keep going all the way to the end. Uh, projects with no profit model should really check out Social Coding's campaign. And uh, altruistic projects of any kind can just come on to Giveth and well, let's talk about it. It's, I feel like it's a great place to just kind of aggregate a lot of these altruistic uh, projects in one spot. We have shirts and stickers somewhere, so uh, I think Quasia actually has, has them, so we can hand them, hand them up out in the hallway. And uh, yeah, if you want to donate, revolution.f is where we receive all of our funds. And thank you guys so much.